think we're giving a given a very limited view of what's going on. I mean, I don't think I think that the, you're talking about the very limited pictures that were being shown. But doesn't it make more sense to go in very strategically and hit very hard to Kennedy's points rather than death by a thousand cuts? from Iran, or even if you liken it to the previous uh, strategy with ISIS, so Kelly, who went on for so long. You have such extensive experience in that part of the world. Has something changed? Is there something new in the calculus of dealing with both these nations? Well, the Secretary of Defense said it's a big change, that this is a line in the sand. And one thing this president really has done cl very clearly, and I think you guys have pointed this out, is that when he says something, he means it. All right. Now, I hope he doesn't mean he's when he says he's going to destroy cultural sites that he's going to do that because we're actually a party to the 1954 Hague Convention on Cultural Look, Objects. Look, Boris Johnson of the U.K. has just called out the president on, on that and called it, you know, potentially a war crime. Yeah, and, and, and that would be a violation of that statute, and that would be imprudent. But setting that aside, the Secretary of Defense has said this is a game changer. Uh, go back to Nikki Haley's speech when she was Secretary of State a few years ago. She pointed out that there's UN sanctions out there that prohibited Soleimani from leaving the country of Iran. Yet he mm. traveled around willy-nilly however he wanted to. just happened to end up in a place right. where they'd hit our... Right. And so, you know, he, we didn't have to have an imminent threat of a national at attack to justify killing this guy. Can, can we just didn't. You speak to the issue of imminence with countries that play such a long game. I mean, when you look at Osama bin Laden, long game. When you look at Iran, right. that's what they do. I mean, the retaliation might come swiftly or it might not. Right, right. I, I remember a saying that the detainees uh, that we held in custody had, and that is, you guys have watches, we have calendars. That shows you their thinking. You know, mm -hmm. they have a 500,000 year view that if a few thousand, 100,000 people of their people die in an effort to achieve the ultimate goal, that's fine. But I think this is a game changer. And my hope is that by taking this bold and decisive action and then coming in behind quickly, uh, you know, the president, I think, was prudent to come out and say, look, I'm not here to start a war. I'm here to prevent a war, but I'm serious. The question I would ask the people who are against this is, how many American troops' lives are worth it to you? Are you willing to get 500 more, 600 more, 1,000 more people killed through these proxies? In taking him out, you know, there's no perfect answer here. You don't know whether taking this out is going to inflame things for a short period of time and then go back to normal or whether it's going to escalate into something more. It's like the stock market. Don't look at one day of stock. Look at mm. two-year, three-year spread. Is the president doing that, though? I hope. I hope. I mean, I think when you look at the people, and I'm just a legal beagle, right, but I have some national security experience, but when you look at the people he surrounds himself, Secretary Esper, the DOD General Counsel, the people at the CIA, I mean, these are prudent people. There's a lot of career people who've weighed in here, not probably as many as some on the Democratic side would like to have weighed in. Uh, this is an executive branch decision. He and he alone, under our Constitution, is the commander in chief, and he and he alone owns this decision. And he and he alone is going to own the responsibility for whatever happens in next of it. But I hope Secretary Pompeo and the professional diplomats come in behind and say, Iran, we're serious now. 